Gorilla Glue is a perfectly fine product when trying to fix things around your house. But what happens when you put it in your hair? Well, in today's story, it would lead to online infamy. In recent years, the idea of Twitter's main character has become quite popular. Basically, this phrase refers to a person who says or does something so absurd and ridiculous that every user of the internet focuses their attention on them for a short period of time. But this 15 minutes of fame can often turn the lives of those at the center of it completely inside out for weeks or even months on end, with some never returning to normalcy. Today we'll be taking a look at two such cases and seeing where they ended up after their wave of negative attention. Our first story begins on February 3rd, 2021, when a woman by the name of Tessica Brown posted a video online telling a story of some misfortune that had recently befallen her. As it turns out, about a month prior, the woman had been styling her hair when she realized she had run out of her usual product. Miss Brown decided to improvise by finding a substitute product, eventually stumbling across a bottle of Gorilla Glue spray. In desperation to achieve the proper follicle look, she began to lather the home improvement product onto her head. As Tessica showcased in another video uploaded the same day, the powerful adhesive worked too well, as it had stuck her hair in place for weeks on end, and would not come out no matter how many times she washed it. The distraught woman ended her tale with a warning, urging others not to make the same mistake she did. This upload soon went viral as the entirety of the World Wide Web came together to ogle at this lady's boggling decision, with reposts gaining millions of views on platforms such as YouTube and Twitter. To most social media users, Tessica quickly became known as the Gorilla Glue Girl. While some chose to ridicule her, others took pity, claiming that she had made an innocent mistake that could have happened to anyone. There were even a few people in her comments offering their own homemade solutions for how to remove the glue, but these apparently did not work. Even the Gorilla Glue company themselves issued a public statement to offer their sympathies, and once again reiterate that their product was not intended for human skin. There were some who were skeptical of Tessica's story though, believing that she was exaggerating her situation for attention. A Louisiana man by the name of Len Martin even decided to take things a step further, uploading a video to Facebook in an attempt to prove how easy it was to remove Gorilla Glue from human skin. He applied some of the adhesive to the rim of a red solo cup and took a sip, declaring that he would simply lick it off. However, Martin underestimated the power of the glue and was soon rushed to the ER. He was told by doctors that he may have to have his upper lip surgically removed if it didn't heal properly. In a turn of events, Len later would come out to state that his story was completely fabricated for attention. This was not surprising, considering a few months prior, he was arrested for pretending to lick ice cream in a grocery store before putting it back on the shelf, a crime we had previously covered on the show. Finally, a few days later, on February 6th, Tessica announced via a series of photos on Instagram that she had gone to the emergency room in an effort to get the situation fixed. After her visit, the doctors prescribed her with sterile water and acetone to continue treatment at home. In addition to this, Tessica also flew out to Los Angeles to receive care from a plastic surgeon by the name of Michael Obing, who offered his services for free in order to remove the remaining glue from her scalp. The doctor created a solvent out of adhesive remover, acetone, aloe vera, and olive oil, which seemed to do the trick. Following her emergency room visit, Tessica set up a GoFundMe page to help pay for medical expenses. She initially only asked for $1,500, but in a short period of time, they had over 23,000 in donations. GoFundMe initially locked the funds, possibly due to a large number of people reporting the campaign as being fraudulent accusing Tessica of trying to take advantage of the situation, but it was quickly unfrozen since that wasn't the case at all. 
As it turns out, the excess cash was going to be donated to Dr. Obing's charity, the Restore Worldwide Foundation, which works to provide reconstructive surgery to people in third world countries. Tessica continued to ride her wave of viral fame long after the Gorilla Glue situation had been resolved. As is the case with many who achieved the explosive internet success she did, Brown began selling a line of t-shirts and hoodies under the label Bonded for Life. She also released a rap song about her experience titled Ma Hair. But perhaps her biggest business venture came in June of 2021, upon launching her own line of hair care products called Forever Hair, including her own brand of hair growth oil and hair glue spray. While the initial reason for her receiving all this attention may have been negative, the now infamous viral star was able to run with it and turn it into a brand. Shortly after the Gorilla Glue ordeal in February, Tessica announced that she and her fiancé, Duet Madison, were expecting their first child together, although she was already a mother of five from her prior relationship. She was very public about her pregnancy, posting multiple updates on her progress. Tragically though, things took a dark turn in June when Tessica announced that she had suffered a miscarriage. For anyone, this would be a horrible and traumatic experience, but the spotlight no doubt only made it more difficult, as she now had to deal with this development in front of a global audience. In under a year, Tessica Brown had seen some of the very greatest and very worst parts of sudden and online fame. Despite the tragedy, she has continued to maintain an active social media presence, although it seems as though her hair still has not fully recovered from the incident. In December of 2021, she posted a video showcasing how her follicles had begun falling out after a recent attempt to dye it, so it seems as though she plans to continue posting any and all updates surrounding her recovery for the foreseeable future. Because of the virality of her story on sites like Twitter, Tessica Brown appears to be fully aware that she will never shake off the title of Gorilla Glue Girl, and rather than try to fight it, she's embraced it and turned it into a business. Our next story, however, concerns someone whose viral fame resulted in nothing but a net negative for his life, career, and family. We'll learn more about this after a brief word from our sponsor. With so many companies in the male grooming space, it can be hard to decide which one to go with. The thing is, one stands above the rest, which is Manscaped. This is because they're trusted by more than 4 million men worldwide for providing premium tools and formulations designed with grooming and hygiene in mind. Because they're the leader of the space, they've developed a brand new lineup of men's products, the Manscaped Ultra Premium Collection. Personally, I'm a fan of their body wash. Not only does it leave your skin clean and moisturized, it also makes you smell very good. On top of this, because it's the winter time, I've also been using the Manscaped lip balm quite a bit. So if you want to try out these products for yourself, go to manscaped.com and use promo code MARS for 20% off your order plus free international shipping. On January 2nd, 2021, a notable musician and podcaster by the name of John Roderick went to his popular Twitter account to create a thread telling a story of an experience he had recently had with his daughter. This was nothing out of the ordinary for the man who was very open on social media about his life and worldviews, but on this day, it appears that this oversharing of his parenting style had gone too far. As he explained in the Twitter thread, his nine-year-old had come up to him early that day expressing that she was hungry. He told her to get a can of baked beans from the kitchen, but when she asked him to prepare it for her, he instead saw it as an opportunity to teach his child how to use a can opener. Rather than actually walk her through the steps on how to use the tool though, Roderick instead opted to let his peckish offspring figure it out all on her own. What followed was a multi-hour long ordeal where she tried and failed again and again to open the can. At one point, she simply gave up and tried to walk away, to which her father claimed to have responded, Neither of us will eat another bite today until we get into this can of beans. The young girl tried for several more hours before finally figuring out the mechanisms of the can opener and freeing the beans within. 
Roderick concluded this thread by saying how proud he was of his daughter for overcoming her frustration and accomplishing the task all by herself. At the time when he posted these tweets, it's clear that John saw it as a wholesome and uplifting story, and perhaps wanted to earn some praise for his hands-off parenting style. However, the thread quickly started picking up steam as users from all across Twitter united to gawk at this tale. Many were quick to point out Roderick's self-congratulatory tone, and how he almost seemed to be more proud of himself rather than of his daughter. Others were focused on the detail of the musician seemingly withholding food from his child, saying it made him come across as borderline sociopathic with some going so far as to accuse him of child abuse. The thread caught on like wildfire, and it wasn't long before quote-unquote Bean Dad began trending nationwide. Initially, John responded to the criticism with a very smug and dismissive attitude. He went on a multi-tweet rant mocking everybody who was angry with him and seemingly not taking the situation seriously. But as you can imagine, this only stoked the flames and made people People hate Bean Dad even more, as they soon began digging through his old tweets to see if they could find anything to ruin him with. It wasn't long before multiple old posts of Roderick's began circulating which contained racially and sexually charged jokes about black, gay, Jewish, and mentally disabled people. There were still others who took their hatred of Bean Dad a step further. Child Protective Services received an onslaught of calls reporting Roderick, and they soon showed up at his doorstep. While their investigation turned up no signs of abuse, it just went to show how out of hand things had become in such a short period of time. In the midst of all this, multiple people who knew the podcaster began issuing public statements about the situation. Jeopardy's Ken Jennings, who worked on a podcast with John, spoke out in his defense, claiming that the Bean story had been exaggerated, and that any anti-Semitic comments were nothing more than ironic jokes. On the other hand, the podcast My Brother, My Brother, and Me, which Roderick had written the theme music for, announced that they would be parting ways with Bean Dad and were looking for someone to compose a new intro tune. Finally, several days after posting the thread, Roderick realized the monumental severity of the situation. He went to his personal website and posted a lengthy apology, clarifying several details of the can of bean story that he had omitted from Twitter. According to him, the tone of that day had actually been much more lighthearted and fun than it may have seemed from the way he told the story initially. He was apparently not actually starving his daughter, as they had enjoyed a large breakfast earlier in the day and were snacking on a bowl of pistachios throughout the process. In addition, his wife had been in the room the entire time, and the whole family bonded and laughed together while trying to solve the problem. He claimed that he downplayed these details in order to play up his rude and self-centered persona. He believed his fans would have picked up on this, but could have never imagined how far the tweets would spread. He also took the opportunity to clarify the older tweets people had been digging up. As was mentioned by Ken Jennings earlier, they were intended as nothing more than ironic and edgy jokes, but he now regretted them and offered an apology. Following this, John Roderick deactivated his Twitter account and took a break from social media. The humbled blue check marker returned the following month, although with a much smaller presence than he did prior. He currently hosts a podcast with his sister titled Road Rage, which seems to be doing decently well on Patreon. While he will most likely never shake the legacy of Bean Dad, it seems as though Roderick would prefer to maintain a low profile and never stoke the ire of Twitter ever again. So there you have the story of Gorilla Glue Girl as well as Bean Dad. And if there's any morals to be learned from this, it's probably that you shouldn't put adhesives in your hair and that you shouldn't tell Twitter that you abuse your child. And on that, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.